Church is about family ties, as I'm with a lady returning to her roots to be nearer her parents. I'm feeling this is a good speechless. Yeah, it's, it's, it's giving me goosebumps. It's lovely. But it's not all smooth sailing with my straight-talking buyer. Deal breaker. Today, I'm in North Yorkshire in the thankful village of Scruton. It's a term which came about in the 1930s and describes a village such as this as one that lost no men during the First World War. And all those who went off to serve king and country came home again. And it's a gorgeous county to come home to. Face you're after, then North Yorkshire could be for you. As well as being England's largest county, 40% of it is made up by the two national parks. And as well as all this gorgeous scenery, the prices here for houses are pretty attractive too. The average price for a detached property is around about 281,000. That's 18,000 lower than the national figure. Although those prices do jump up if you're looking for a postcode within the national parks. So what about today's buyer? Well, she's not so much escaping to the country as returning to it, having been born and bred here. Retired sales manager Anne currently lives in the city of Cardiff. She met friend Shona when she moved to the Welsh capital for work 35 years ago. My relationship with Shona is uh, one of mutual likes of um, shopping and um, going to spas. We never argue. I can't remember ever <laughs> arguing. Anne is, uh, is, is great company. She's also a, a very um, typical Yorkshire person, I would say. Very forthright in her opinions. Um, which I like. Buying and selling houses regularly, Anne has worked her way up the property ladder over the years to achieve a home she's really proud of. My present house is a big four bedroom detached. I've got a fantastic garden with all my friends who come to visit, as in my squirrels and my hedgehog and all the birds that I feed. It's the perfect house for me at the moment. Anne is very stylish and a um, very good interior designer, I would say. She's redesigned the interior of this house several times, um, and it always looks stunning, I think. Whilst she's enjoyed her years spent in Wales, Anne has recently felt a pull back to her Yorkshire roots. My parents are in their late 80s. My father, in particular, has um, had a few health issues. My plan is to actually just be there if they need me, if they need to do things, but also to take them for a run out and have them around for lunch and just do things. I just, you know, appreciate them while, I've, you know, while they're still around. Although the move is predominantly one of practicality, there are a number of things Anne's missed about her home county. Yorkshire is just a, a fabulous county, full of beauty, full of history, uh, and full of Yorkshire people who are the friendliest people you can meet, I think. Her friends have promised to visit regularly and to make sure she picks the right property with plenty of space for guests, Shona's coming along to support her on her search. I think Anne may have chosen me to help her because I'm such a level-headed, sensible person and I will give her a, an honest opinion as well. I, I love that part of the world, so it won't be a hardship going to visit. We might overstay our welcome from time I to time. I know, I know. Although Anne currently lives in a new-build home, for her next move, she'd like somewhere she can put her own stamp on. The challenge will be to find somewhere she likes as much as her current home in a location that works for Anne, her parents, and her visiting guests. There's a lot to consider, but with a clear goal in sight, Anne isn't phased. I think waking up the first day in the new home is going to be a great feeling because it's going to be the start of a new era. It's going to be the start of my master plan coming to fruition. Anne wants to be around 45 minutes from her parents in Middlesbrough, so we're concentrating our search in the centre of the county, where the villages and towns have good road access to the north. I've got the location down, now I just need to find out what Anne's looking for in a property. And Shona, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> welcome to North Yorkshire. Or should that be welcome home to North Yorkshire? Yes, yes. When did you leave? Uh, 1978. Um, went to London and then obviously on to Wales a few years later. So key things about this property? Key things are um, 
I'd ideally eventually want three bedrooms because I'm prepared to do a renovation. I want a nice one of these big kitchens, very similar to one, my one at home now, that's kind of like a living kitchen and a nice garden that I can potter and just do a bit of, you know, a bit of vegetables. And how important is community in the search? How rural can we take you? I would like to be within the edge of a village. I don't want neighbours on top of me type thing and, and, and very close, but I don't want to be rural. And Shona Anne looks like a lady who really knows her mind. Will you know what she wants when you see it too? I, th I think I will know what she wants when she sees it. Uh, however, she, what she's looking for now is something quite different from anything she's ever lived in before. I'm used to living in very old properties and doing things with them, and Anne has always lived in something very modern in the past, but she's looking forward to looking in for something a bit more rural and a bit more dilapidated. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I needs shouldn't a... have said anything about that. No. <laughs> Something that needs a bit of work. Yeah. And what do you not want us to show you? Semi-detached. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> no arguing with that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I definitely do. I, it has to be detached. So it's shown her here actually to support me in this search. I might. Need it's very likely. <laughs> Just remind me what your budget is again. Well, my top budget, absolute top budget, is five hundred thousand. Well, the sun is shining for us. Shall we get this search underway? Yeah, I'd love to. Come yes, on, looking then. forward to it. <laughs> so, with a budget of £500,000, Anne's hoping to get a three-bedroom property with a spacious kitchen and good-sized garden to grow some veg. She'd like a project, but any work would have to be factored into the budget. Last, but by no means least, she's after a detached property. But she doesn't want to be too isolated, so would like to be in or near a village. We've got three fantastic properties, all of which are great contenders to become Anne's new Yorkshire home. I'll be asking the ladies to guess the price of each before I reveal it. And for our final offering, the mystery house, we're throwing the wish list to one side and showing Anne a property she won't be expecting. Our first stop is the village of Orne. This peaceful, pretty village is home to a well-regarded pub and a church. There's an active community with a number of sporting clubs for locals and an unusual local shop in the form of a street cart. Locals leave their money in exchange for fresh local produce. Once a year in the summer, the village also plays host to a popular street fair. It's close to the junction of the A19, which would offer Anne a direct route to her parents in Middlesbrough. The house we're seeing is on the edge of the village, on an attractive, mature plot. So here we are, property one. I like the look of it. I like the look of it, yeah. yeah. Shona? I th it's certainly got a feel of an older property. Like yes, it. yeah. My only observation now would be... The houses. The neighbours are yeah. quite close. Yeah, <laughs> overlooking. Yeah. But it's very impressive, it's very but pretty. But the look of the house is great. Mm. I'm getting the sense you want to get in there. Don't you? You're like, okay, okay, let's just get in. Yeah? Okay, stop talking. Come on, come on, let's go explore. <laughs> this detached house was built in 1910, but has been extended twice to create a fabulous five bedroom home. Okay, come on through, ladies, into the sitting room. And if you come down to this end of the room, you can really get a sense of, of how big it is. What do you think? Yes, I like the size. Um, unusual with the. The L shape. Shona, what do you think? I think it's a lovely space, really lovely living space, and the sun flooding in through the window is just yeah. super, isn't it? Mm. Now, you mentioned the, the L shape of this room. Mm. Well, downstairs you have a study that we passed on the way in, and uh -huh. you also have a study behind you here. Oh, right. But... I don't have to study twice, though, do I? <laughs> <laughs> They've had an architect in the current owners to look at this space. You could just knock that wall knock it down, through and yeah, go back and, then and make have this a bigger. really yes. gorgeous, yes. open, living, yes. entertaining space. Yes, I need to see more. Would you like to see more? Are you Absolutely. Let's yeah? go. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Kitchen's just behind us. Come okay. this way. Good. Anne certainly knows what she's looking for on this search, and so far, I'm loving her enthusiasm. into your kitchen breakfast space. What do you think? It's... I love it. Yeah, I mean, I love the colours. Um, I like the sink. Um, it's probably a little bit smaller than I was wanting, because I was wanting it more of a kitchen living. Um, but as it is, it's, it's a nice kitchen, yes. Yeah. Shona, could you see Anne cooking here? 
Uh, I wouldn't see Anne cooking anywhere. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be <laughs> my first thought. All the thought. secrets. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lovely, compact kitchen. I mean, it would be nice for, for cooking mm -hmm. if you did much. And you can eat in here as well. And It'll take it's a lovely. microwave. <laughs> there's lots of natural light, too. I mean, yes. it's, it's a super space, I think. Yeah. You mentioned bedrooms to me earlier. You wanted yes. three. Yes. This place has five. Shona, would you lead the way? <laughs> I will. All right. Yep. Five. The stairs are at the front of the property, off the main entrance hall, where there's also a useful utility space, WC, and a larder. Upstairs, there are five decent-sized double bedrooms, which share the use of a family bathroom. So this room is currently being used as the master bedroom. Right. What do you think? I think the size is... Is fine, yes. I think um, there's obviously a sink over there, but I think as a master bedroom, it should have an ensuite. But as you said, I mean, there's five bedrooms and I only really want a good three, then there's two to play with. So it might be a, just a reconfiguration that needs to be. I can feel the cogs working. Oh, You're yeah, just trying I'm to work yeah. out. My head, my head's gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's time to pop outside to the garden and start thinking about what this house will be on the market for. Right. Okay. Okay. Although this house is ready to move into, there's certainly enough of a project here for Anne to sink her teeth into. Outside, there's a large, detached garage and a secluded patio just off the kitchen area. The main garden is to the front of the house, making the most of the southerly aspect. So here we are, back in the garden. You've got established fruit trees, apple trees. Shona, do you think this would work for Anne? I do, and there's plenty of room for vegetable plots or more beds if she wanted. And she likes the birds. There's lots of wild mm, birds mm. in this garden. It's lovely. And I am sensing... There's a little something that's holding you back with this one. It is. It, it's, it's the proximity of all the other properties, and particularly at the back, I, f I would feel surrounded. Well, OK. Time to guess the price. What do you think this property is on the market for? I would say 420. OK. Shona? Oh, I think it would probably be more than that, because it's a super location and, and there's lots of potential in the house itself, so I'd say about 450. This property is on the market for four seven five. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Well, now you know the price. Time to have another explore, I think. Okay, I'll catch up with you in a bit. Okay, thanks. Coming in twenty five thousand pounds under budget, this extended property has two more bedrooms than Anne asked for, and downstairs it offers plenty of project potential to reconfigure the layout. There's a lovely large garden and it's in a great village location. Just 45 minutes drive to Anne's parents in Middlesbrough. Okay, so I think you see what we could do with this. I mean, certainly it would take a double bed, wouldn't it? I think it would. Yeah. So it's it as big as most doubles, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And people house. coming to stay don't need, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, don't need lots of wardrobes for us and whatever. The good points about this house for Anne is that it's got lots of opportunities to turn it into the property that she's looking for. So she could reconfigure the downstairs if she wanted to, to make a larger lounge or relocate the kitchen if that was important to her. The house is great and got huge potential, but I think the, the overlooking um, houses at the back, I think, could just make it a, a no-no for me. Hello, ladies. Hi. Have you seen enough? Yes, thank you. Ready for the next property? Absolutely. On we go. OK, good. On the southern border of the North York Moors lie the ruins of a great medieval fort. The 900-year-old castle in Helmsley played host to a mighty siege during the Civil War and today acts as a reminder of Yorkshire's rich history. Although the castle is now at peace, the market town of Helmsley still finds itself facing conflict today, albeit of a more peaceful nature. In 2015, the town fought off challenges from high streets across the UK to be awarded Best Market Town High Street in Britain. Anne and Shona are paying a visit to another award winner. Auntie Anne's Bakery stands on a site which has been serving baked delights to the people of Helmsley for over 70 years. Hello, Anne. <laughs> This looks like a really lovely traditional Yorkshire bakery. Yes, it's been here for as long as I can remember from being a child. There's always been a bakery. And how long have you been here? Um, about nine years ago, me and my daughter Susan took it over. 
Oh, so you've been a professional baker for many years then. But when did you start baking as a child? I started baking yeah. as a child, helping my mum. Oh, uh, we were lovely. local farmers from just a five miles away. Yeah. So I've always, yeah, I've always done yeah. just traditional baking. Yeah. It's just something I've loved all my life and, yeah, I love doing it. A natural, it. yeah. If I was going to take something home for my grandchildren, what would you recommend? My grandchildren love, actually, uh, the Yorkshire curd pies, and they come here and help bake it. And if you'd like to come through, I'll show you how we make it, and you can fill a pie for yourselves, if Ooh, you want. Oh, fabulous. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> Anne prides herself on using traditional, time-honoured baking methods and locally sourced ingredients. Her famous Yorkshire curd pies have been named the best in the north of England. Traditionally, farmers' wives made Yorkshire curd tarts using cow's milk containing colostrum, which, when heated, automatically turned into curds. Nowadays, Anne heats her milk to boiling point before adding Epsom salts to separate it. Well, I'll just sprinkle on the top like that to start with, and then just gently stir it in. Oh, it is boiling away, isn't it? My goodness. And if you look closely, can you see little Ooh, the little was it curdly? Yeah, it, yeah, it just, that's when it's starting to curdle. So if we go through, well, then I'll show you what the next stage okay. is. The process takes half an hour. The milk is then strained to separate the curds from the whey and left to cool before mixing with eggs, cream, sugar, and nutmeg. Anne also likes to add currants. And this is the secret ingredient, and then the finished product. So it's a different colour as well. It's a different colour because it has a lot Something of extra. rich ingredients in there. She's not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell, tell you. Is it this that makes yours better than anybody else's? It is this that makes it better than anybody mm. else's. It's a nice moist. A lot of people's curd are quite dry, whereas this curd tart, when it gets baked, is still quite moist mm -hmm. and soft texture. After filling the pastry shells, the tarts are cooked for 20 minutes then best served cool with a nice cup of Yorkshire tea. Mm. Mm, that's lovely. Is that OK? The pastry is so crisp, mm. I can't mm. get over it. I can understand why you won an award yeah, for this, Alex. It's delicious. Mm. Mm. I've not tasted anything like this before. In the height of summer, Anne and her team make in excess of 300 tarts a week. Now, I know how much these ladies love a cup of tea and a chat, but there's no time to soak up the sun. We've got a house to find. Next, we're travelling further north to Scruton. A small rural village, Scruton has a mix of agricultural buildings and farms, period cottages and newer developments. At the heart of the village lies the 18th century church and local pub. Despite the peaceful position, it's got good access to major roads and is just a 15-minute drive to the town of North Allerton should Anne need to satisfy her shopping habits. Our next property is situated just outside the village centre in a semi-rural setting. So here we are, property number two, barn conversion. Yeah, like it. My only aversion to them is, is often that you... They're either very, very isolated um, which I didn't want. Or they are in a courtyard and it's, it, you know, it's got that neighbour thing that I didn't really want, but no, I like the look of it. The barn conversion could also come with your lovely little paddock behind you there. Uh-huh, yeah. Little vegetable plot over there. Maybe I think, a yeah, I was just, that crossed my mind then, okay. yes. I was just thinking that, that's a vegetable part. Quite yes. a few cabbages in there, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have so much space out here. It comes with an integrated garage, but that could also mm. be part of your living space yeah. inside. Uh-huh, let's go. OK, we're going to waste no time. <laughs> Converted in 2003, this property was originally a cattle barn in the 1800s and has some lovely original features remaining, which I hope Anne will appreciate. She did say she was looking for something a bit different to what she's used to, and this is certainly that. We're heading into your kitchen space first. Right. So you have a lovely range in this kitchen, although, mm. according to Shona, you might not be using that too much no. with your For my cooking. extensive cooking, yes. <laughs> she yeah. can lean on that on a cold winter's day, though. That'd be good. <laughs> have you cooked on a, a range before? Yes, yes, definitely. And you'd manage, Give Anne, some really. lessons. Yes. <laughs> Lots of reasons to come and stay. Mm. Mm. She can come and do the cooking. <laughs> <laughs> And you've got enough space to get that sort of breakfast dining yeah, experience. Yeah. 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 This is meeting with your approval. Oh, I'm like, yeah, 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 definitely. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. All right, OK, that's <laughs> <the> time. 
Although unfurnished, they seem to like the character of this place, which is good because there's more to come. As we move into the rear wing, we find a bedroom, bathroom and sitting room. Into your living space. You've got the fireplace there. How does this feel to you? I think I need to put it all into kind of where there, everything is planned out, but, yeah, no, it looks good. It's, it's, I mean, what's there? Well, this is your guest wing. So you've got a oh, lovely... A wing. A wing. I like wing. a wing. I like a wing. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a, a beautiful, big double bedroom and then a gorgeous big bathroom at the so end of that. how many bedrooms in this one? You've got three bedrooms, three bathrooms. All right. Shall we check the rest of the bedrooms? I think oh, we need right, to. Come on. I think we need to. I think this property could really work for Anne. As well as the separate guest wing, upstairs there are two further generous-sized bedrooms, both with their own bathroom. An ideal setup for visitors from Wales, or if their parents decide to stay. And then through into what could be annual master bedroom. All right. Are you loving those features of the yes, old barn? Yes, it's just because it's obviously so so plain in the way that they've yeah. obviously done it, but then just keeping those and you know obviously not boarding them in or anything like that. It's just yeah. Structurally, it's clearly very sound. So it's more doing the personalising it to your taste, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Some and I could do it while well I live here, yeah. because one of my feelings was with uh, something I had to convert, I would have to go into rental for a while, and, the, and you know, the stress of doing that. I mean, you know, I keep saying I want to do that, but, I, you know, can I handle the stress? Mm. Can the builder handle me having the <laughs> stress? Being so stressed. <laughs> you know, so well, I'm glad you're liking everything you see so far. Uh -huh. There's still outside space to show you. Uh -huh. There is one little fly in the ointment which we're going to tackle head on. Let's have a look. <laughs> At the back of the property is a lawned, low-maintenance walled garden, which can be accessed from the main living areas of the property. OK, and Shona, here's our little, little fly in the ointment. Mm. Your guest wing is attached at the very end. Right. Deal breaker. It's such a pity, such a pity. Yeah, I absolutely didn't want any neighbours and certainly, you know, somebody I can look into their garden and... And it's such a shame. Even with another foot? No, no. And then no, you have a nice secluded garden? No, no, because noise would come over and, I mean, you know, all I need is, you know, a whole group of children out in having fun. Enjoying themselves. Yes. Don't like that. Don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's detached, detached with distance. You know, even the little bit of remoteness, that was kind of, you know, I was adapting to that. That is not my compromise. OK. What's this on the market for? I'm going to guess 450. I would say 475. Shona's on the money on this one. 475. <gasps> Worth considering at that price? No. no. Why don't you take in some more of the property while <laughs> yeah. you're here? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. This great three bedroom, three bathroom barn conversion offers Anne flexible living space and somewhere she can tailor to her own taste without the need for doing too much work. It has a private garden, an option to purchase an additional paddock, lies close to the village, and is 40 minutes from Anne's parents. But the fact that the bathroom wall in the guest wing is adjoined to another property seems to make it a no-go, which is a real shame. I was starting to fall in love with this place and, um, you know, I, even some of the compromises, I was prepared to make them. And then, unfortunately, I discovered I had a neighbour. I think Anna's learnt a lot from her experience today. It might not have all quite sunk in yet, what she's learnt, but I think when she reflects, she will realise that perhaps her ideal property doesn't actually exist and she might have to make more compromises than she'd originally thought. But I don't want to be the one to tell her. <laughs> and Shona, day one is wrapped up. Time for a cup of tea? Oh. Definitely. <laughs> At least. <laughs> or maybe the bar. <laughs> We're in Yorkshire with Anne and her friend Shona. After 35 years in Cardiff, Anne's heading back to her home county to be close to her parents. With a budget of £500,000, 
she's looking for a property that she can put her mark on. Coming up, Anne makes a connection in our mystery house. I feel I'm related to the owner. <laughs> I would do everything the same. And I visit a local farm to find out the benefits of eating organic. Lime mousse sauce, doesn't it? It does, it does. <laughs> Oh, I really felt for Anne yesterday. The look on her face when she realised that that lovely barn conversion was ever so slightly attached really said it all, which means today's mystery house has to deliver the goods. To stand a fighting chance, it needs to give Anne everything she wants and also push her out of her comfort zone. After all, it's not called the mystery house for nothing. So today, we're going to take her and Shona to a property with a project, but there's a twist. It's not Anne's project. She'll find out why very soon. And what do you think the mystery house might be today? After yesterday, I'm, I'm probably expecting you're going to have to go for more of the renovation side of things and uh, give me a nice project. And would that be good news? Yes, I, you know, I'm, I'm quite prepared for a lot of things, but, you know, I, I'll remember these words later on today. <laughs> <laughs> Our mystery offering is in the village of thornton le Clay, near the county border and the city of York. thornton le Clay is a quiet village with a population of around 200 and is perfectly positioned amongst gentle hills just south of the North York Moors making it a popular spot with visiting walkers and cyclists. Strolling past the characterful stone cottages, passers-by can purchase homegrown produce left for sale by locals. There's a family-run pub hosting regular events and live music, a few doors down from which is our final property. And here is your mystery house. What do you think? It's not as big a mystery as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yes. Um, it looks lovely. It's um, very nice, clean looking, lovely garden. So, yeah, looks good. Now, this, Anne, is a turnkey house. Uh -huh. Turn up, drop your bags, it's all done. There is one extra mystery about this property. There is, uh, within the plot, another house that has permission to be built. But I'm going to talk to you a bit more about that. That's a project. <laughs> <laughs> right. Come this way. Okay. Built in the 1960s, the current owners have spent in the region of £120,000, extending and refurbishing this house to an extremely high standard. I know Anne wasn't planning on buying a newly modernised property as she wanted to do the work herself, but this one is so beautifully presented, I think it's worth throwing into the mix. We come through into your kitchen diner. Oh, fabulous. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling this is a good speechless. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's giving me goosebumps. It's lovely. Yeah, <laughs> this is nice. Oh, don't cry. I'm going, yeah. Are you okay? Well, it was such a bad day yesterday. <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's lovely. It's, I mean, it's, it's so like my one at home, you know, in, in many respects, you know, kind of the style, but, but better. Even bigger and better. <laughs> Even bigger and better, yeah. Stunning. Yeah. Let's explore your mystery house. Let's, okay. Let's keep this tour going. Okay. <laughs> Come on, ladies, into your living space. Which connects from the kitchen through into your sunroom. So very open, fluid living. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Would that work for you? Yeah, and certainly this furniture is similar size to mine, yeah. so... Uh, yeah, it would be. Yeah. But you see a nice corner unit, you see, oh, okay. would actually work, wouldn't it? OK. Yeah. Shall yeah. we see more? Yeah, oh, yes, carry on. Oh, Come this way. OK. As we move into the newer part of the house, the ground floor benefits from the addition of a utility space, a small double bedroom, and what is now the largest of the bedrooms. And into the main master bedroom. It's lovely. Lovely colour. Now you've got a lovely open space here. You've got... Ensuite bathroom, got a little uh, study area there which you could turn into a nice dressing room area for yourself. Goodness me. It's like a And there's all those wardrobes. <laughs> Built in wardrobes. I feel I'm related to the owner. <laughs> <laughs> we, we seem to have, you know, the same taste. I would do everything the same. Originally, you were asking for a property with older character. Do you think 
more of a new build is is really what it's appealing to your heart i think probably yes i've had so many new houses and you know not had to do a lot to them so there was there was that worry that if I buy an older one, will it need to keep doing? And, you know, will I adapt to it as much as I would to something like this with a clean living? Mm -hmm. mm. And Shona, is this more of what Anne has traditionally lived in, the houses she's bought before? This is very much more in the style of, of Anne's homes that she's had before. And, and, in fact, this is very... feels to me just like she could just move straight in. So it's time now to head outside, look at the garden, talk about price and a little more about what makes this the mystery house. Right, OK. Come this way. On the first floor, there are two more good-sized double bedrooms sharing a smart, modern bathroom. Now, it's time for me to take a deep breath before tackling an issue that awaits us outside. And now you can really take in the house. The current property comes with this garden up to the fence. And the original property came with the extra space there, but the current owners have permission, planning permission, to build a new property in that corner of the garden. But for this point, I just want you to think about the price for this bit of garden and the house. You can go first today. I think that it's probably on for 495. I'm going to say an optimistic 475. This property is currently on the market for £495,000. <laughs> <laughs> Shona, you are bang on the money. But I've had a chat with the owners and they would be willing, further to a, a little extra negotiation, to walk away from the entire plot. But that's a conversation you would have to have with them. Yes, I understand. Well, now you know the price. Why don't I let you explore the upstairs bedrooms and I'll catch up with you a bit later. Mm -hmm. Lots to talk about. Mm -hmm. Lovely, thanks. OK, thank you. It looks as though this converted dormer bungalow might just have won Anne over. It has four bedrooms and the modern open-plan kitchen diner she was after. Its high standard of finish means there's no work needed, but with a neutral decor, it still gives Anne the chance to make it her own. There's a lovely lawn garden, and the journey to Anne's parents would take around an hour. Oh, this is lovely. Mm -hmm. I think what I would do would be to make the whole of this one level as the master suite. As soon as I walked through the front door, I had a feeling that this could really be a house that, that Anne would love, and that's been reinforced all the way round, actually. It's got my name on it. It, it has, mm -hmm. yes. So I think the last couple of days have certainly been a bit of a roller coaster emotionally. Um, I, you know, I was caught between do I want an old house, do I want a new house? I knew what I didn't want, um, and I knew what I did want. Uh, at least I've found that now. What do you think of the garden? I think it's fabulous. I love the established bushes over there and the fact that you can... <laughs> and it sounds like you're moving in already. <laughs> Possibly, yes. Okay. <laughs> Lots to talk about. Let's go find somewhere to share. Okay, okay. <laughs> With spring most definitely in the air, farmers across the country are busy planting crops for the growing season ahead. I've come to Home Farm to meet third generation farmer Peter Richardson to talk about the wide variety of crops he's currently planting and to find out what he's going to do with them once they've been harvested. Hi, Peter. Good, Good to see you. you. What are we planting today? Uh, just a bit of broccoli today. It's the first of the season, so we're putting in about 10,000 plants to the acre. This crop will be ready mid-July. How many different crops do you grow here? Oh, somewhere in the region, about 19 to 20. So it, get, it gets fairly full on. And why do you plant so many different crops? Because that's a little bit unusual. Well, just basically who we're involved with is Riverford and uh, we do, we've got this box scheme. Most growers would just tend to grow one crop for a big supermarket and it would be packed centrally. The model we use is totally different, but it seems to work, the customers like it. The 500-acre farm grows in the region of 70 to 80 acres of veg most years. In 1996, Peter decided to convert the farm to organic before joining forces with the Devon-based Riverford team who were looking to set up a box scheme in Yorkshire. When you decide, as a farmer, to go organic, what does that mean for you? You've got to, you've got to think differently. You've got, you've got to work with nature. You can't fight it. 
Um, your crop rotation is very, very critical. You know, for instance, if we grew broccoli on the same land year in, year out, we'd, we'd, we'd get pest problems and disease problems. But, yeah, it's what the market wants, and I think it's, a, it's a nice way to do it, to be fair. Despite using modern machinery, being organic means that Peter uses traditional farming methods, like crop rotation, which makes for harder work but promotes healthy, nutrient-rich soil. They also make their own organic fertiliser with an anaerobic digester. So, Peter, what does this do? Well, basically, it's a process where we make methane, which creates electric, and we also have a byproduct of uh, fertiliser, which we use on the farm. And how does that actually happen? Basically, the big blue thing over there, it's, that's the feed hopper. We fill that up with about 18 tonne of food a day. And every half hour, it automatically feeds itself, basically pushes the food into the tank, whereas the temperature in the tank is about 40-odd degrees. Bit all... cosy. Yeah. <laughs> and all the bacteria gets to work, and as I say, creates the methane, which goes off to the CHP engine. And uh, we, we probably use about 20% of the electric it produces for the fridges, and the rest of it's exported to the grid. And when you say food, what are you feeding it with? Uh, basically, cattle manure, any outgrade veg, and grass silage, which is basically grass. All the leftovers, almost? Basically, yes. As well as producing electricity to power the farm, the remaining vegetable matter is used as compost and the liquid mass pumped back out and used as an organic fertiliser, meaning nothing on the farm goes to waste. So it sounds like what you're producing here is the most natural, sustainable way to create great fertiliser for the earth. Without a doubt, uh, yeah, can't beat it in my opinion. And how do these veggies look that you grow? Oh, they look fantastic. We're yeah? just packing a few at the moment. Can I, I give so. you a hand? Of course you can. Please right. come this way. In the packing shed, every veg box is packed by hand with a range of seasonal produce. Manager Greg Penn is on site to show me how it works. Greg, good to see you. Hi, how are you, Margarita? I'm good. How can I help today? Well, we'd like you to pack some broccoli, if that's all right. Okay. We need two heads of broccoli per box. Great, OK. And what can we expect from each box? What will a customer get? It's really a range of organic, seasonal produce. Um, it's all grown for flavour and taste, and depending on how... Um, uh, the sort of time of year, it depends a little bit on what we're actually uh, growing and putting in the boxes. The line moves fast, doesn't it? It does, it does. <laughs> The boxes come in a variety of sizes, as does the veg. Some of it might not look as beautiful as it does on the supermarket shelves, but the taste certainly isn't compromised. So, Greg, do you think organic farming is actually changing the way we're eating as a nation? Absolutely, because ours is a seasonal uh, box of vegetables, um, our customers really have to cook with them, uh, with what we provide them, really. You know, a lot of families get our veg boxes and they, they cook with the kids and, and they, you know, they explore our recipes and they have to do a little bit of research as to what they might want for tea that night, depending on kind of what's gone in the veg box that, uh, that week. Um, and people get really excited about that, certainly. Passionate about food again. Really passionate about food, really passionate about vegetables. We are real veg nerds and we really uh, <laughs> want people to, to embrace that and eat, you know, really fantastic quality veg. Um, and we believe we do that in the, the best way. Well, I've got to get going now, but thank you so much for having me and showing me the ropes. It's been really lovely to have you. And I think it's only fair that you uh, grab yourself a veg box on your way out. Oh, lovely. OK. <laughs> the company has three farms in the UK between them delivering to a staggering 47,000 households a week, which goes to show there's certainly demand out there for organic produce. I, for one, am definitely converted. Taking Anne to the mystery house really was uh, a bit of a gamble, but I think it's paid off. There's only one way to find out. Anne, Shona, it's been an adventure. It has. We've had a few ups and downs. I hope you'll agree we ended on an up today. You did. You did. Now, usually with a mystery house, it's the property that takes people right outside their comfort zone. But we brought you right back into yours. Yes, um, and that concerns me a little bit that I haven't kind of gone for that adventure of finding something different. And probably most people who know me will not be surprised that I've ended up where, you know, thinking that the mystery house is... Is the one, really. So what happens next? What are you going to do about the mystery house? I like it. I like it a lot. I think what I would have to do is, is work out the, the distance from my parents. And Shona, do you think the mystery house is a home that Anne could be happy in? I'm sure it's a home she could be happy in. I, just her instantaneous reaction when she walked through the door, 
it just told me that she felt she was at home there, she could move straight in. And if you find out that commute could be workable from the mystery house to your parents, would you go back and have a chat with the vendor? I think a bit of negotiating needs to be done, yes. OK, that is wonderful news. I am over the moon to hear that. And just thank you so much. It's been a joy to share your home county of North Yorkshire with you and show you around a little bit more, welcome you back home. Thank you very much. It's, it's been a pleasure meeting you. And can I've got to also thank Shona for helping me out. And, and being my uh, moral support as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's been my pleasure. It really has. In the mystery house, Anne described the last couple of days as being a real roller coaster of a journey. And I know how she feels of being right there with her. I'm hoping that after a little more investigation into that journey time between the mystery house and her mum and dad's and whether that commute could work for her, we'll be getting a call from Anne to say that she is now calling North Yorkshire home once again. We wish her all the best and I will see you next time on Escape to the Country. After further research, Anne decided the mystery...